was no other way. I searched every shop in Boston to no avail. The Scarlet Letter could not be bought, so I started from scratch. <laughs> It took me quite some time to find the gold silk thread. Gold thread is precious, and so I had to have it for my letter. If I have to keep nothing but the scarlet letter, it must be special. Ah, Christ. Ooh. Sorry. You mustn't be so careful with it, Master Brackett. Let me show you. Fasten it here. Oh, I adore pretty things. Uh. Uh. Master Brackett. Mrs. Pritt. Why do you hesitate? Isn't this improper? At the very least. <laughs> do you know how costly gold silk thread is, Master Brackett? I'm just a jailer. Take a guess. Humanly. I'm humanless. Oh, I despise self pity, Master Brackett. I mean you no harm, Mrs. Pritt. I asked you to help me fix my punishment. There's nothing improper in that. We should go. Bring me my child. My first three months are spent in that prison. Unlike my mother, I have no affections for pretty things. Nor do I care for our jailer, Master Bracket. Who shudders? Every time the edge is past my cradle. A nice man, though. But I don't like nice men. I don't like the worst. Are you married, Master Bracket? 30 years. And what is your wife's name? Charlotte. Crystal. I was a milkman and she made bread. Mm. And here we are in Boston. Uh -huh. I lived in Amsterdam. Oh, uh, well, I've meant to see it now. Yes, well, you've missed nothing. I like the woods, like the feel of the trees swaying dangerously above me. The threat of sudden disaster has the court's punishment but me. I crave catastrophe, the slightest hint of it. Mesmerized by this man. I take immediately against him. Hester, 
Esther removes me from her breast and reveals our letter to the crowd. Oh! The hush is enormous. What is she doing? What does that woman think she's doing? She's taking her place among us, Governor. She makes a nonsense of her penance. That letter is extraordinary. What a striking woman. A seamstress. What is her name? Adulteress. A woman as striking as she is is worthy of adultery. Who is the father? We want the child's father. We want his blood. The citizenry demands your response, Mistress Prince. Never! The trees rock violently. Hester shivers, and I am happy. Such a happy baby. Then the storm approaches. Hester, there is a way to spare yourself a lonely indignity. Is it not proper to share the burden of punishment? I prefer my own company. Why don't I know you? I'm a doctor. I've come from the woods. Well, I don't know many doctors who come from the woods. Your minister is ill. Hester, will you not give us his name? A better fate awaits him, should you name him. How? My pardon? A better fate. How does it await him? Well, we presume, we trust that it does. I don't. I told you, your minister is ill. See how he falls. But you come from the woods. How did you know? Hester Prince, your indifference grieves our good minister. I am anything but indifferent. Leave her, it's no use. She won't speak. The minister speaks, I scream. Calm that child. The infant speaks to us. Indeed. The child will not be called, Governor. Just as the storm will not be called. Hester Prince, sentence cannot be delayed. You and you, child, who will not be calm, will remain on the scaffold this day for a period of three hours. And you will be looked upon by every citizen of Boston, and you will wear the letter of the adulteress upon your person for the rest of your days, Hester Prynne. And then it happens. A mighty storm descends. The crowd is first in fear, and a chill seizes Hester, as surely as a news might tighten about her neck. Hester Brynn, give us his name, the child's father. Tell us his name. I have said all that I need to say, sir. I don't feel at all well. Oh, heartbreak. Surely it's just a simple stomach upset. There's no need. Heartbreak and disappointment. A young member of your flock gone astray. And I, who will not be caught, The child is fine. No fever. A healthy set of lungs. Her name is Pearl. Of course. She may have been proven to be ill. Such bad weather lately. So cold. My daughter is called Pearl. It's so unpredictable. The storm this afternoon, for instance. A freak of cloudburst, one might say. Which began precisely at the moment you stepped upon this scaffold. And then precisely at the moment you stepped back inside this prison. Coincidence of weather is thrilling, don't you think? The child is quiet now. She took to the draft. So you're remarkably unattractive. <laughs> and your hump, it's grown. Do not touch me. I admire deformity. Cruelty becomes you. <clears throat> Poison me? You've already poisoned my child. If that is true, you stood by and watched it happen. You look old, Esther. Punished. 
Let me touch your mom. Take the track. You make an odd doctor. And what do you call yourself now? Roger Chillingworth. Take the track, Esther. Esther, a healer. Do not lead people to believe otherwise. You had a kindness about you once. A gratefulness. When I brought you tea, or woke you from a nightmare, you looked at me with such decency. A job has not killed you. See? You won't be staying long in Boston if you don't plan to claim me as your wife. But tell me it's a good doctor. I'll stay. You're not a doctor. I can isolate a sickness, cure an ailment, and administer to grief. I've used these two years very wisely, Esther. Have you? I have, Pearl. And I will have my vengeance. Have it now. I believe the child's father was in the marketplace today. Somewhere in that crowd, he was sweating under his collar. And oh, what a crowd there was. You're famous, Esther. All of New England knows your name. And I, a humble doctor among your admirers. I'll find him, Esther. You found me. It's enough. I sent you here. It's true. I myself to blame, but I did not abandon you. No. I abandoned you. So let me abandon you. I will stay in Boston, Esther. So will you. I might not. I might go elsewhere. Want your sin and your punishment. Your vanity will not allow you to leave. We used to sleep together. I fed you when you were sick. I bathed you. I'm not a child, Esther. I'm ugly. Mildliness will find him out. And when I do, I will make his torment my life's work. Your life can't last that much longer. No. But his can. If I close my eyes, I might convince myself you're handsome. <laughs> you could be a girl's father. I'm not a very paternal, Esther. Take care. You will not reveal me to anyone, and we will not meet again. I hate you, but I won't betray you. You've already betrayed me. Now, keep me a secret. Sometimes, I think I'll take Pearl far from here. I'll teach her to read, and she'll go to have many friends. <laughs> I'll remarry into great wealth, and my daughter's popularity will be legendary. It's only a thought. Beyond here is the woods, Esther. A vast space full of nothing but a third to be unseen. I said it was only a thought. I know you never loved me. I'm certain the child's father was a man of high standing, Esther. Your 
expertise was always impeccable. Ridiculous name. Woods. 
I like the woods, and you'll be my special son. You laughed at me. When? When did I laugh at you? Then, when I stood with Hester on the scaffold. You were an infant when you stood on the scaffold with your mother. I remember. I know. Why do you carry a looking glass? So I never miss a trick. Why, you such an odd child. I'm not a child. I'm a treasure. So you are. What's that? A gift from your father. Take it. Do <laughs> <laughs> so you always fight your friends? <laughs> Good day, Mr. Sibbins. I see you were busy schooling my own. Mr. Chillingworth, my favorite physician. Minister, do witches sleep? You should hold your tongue, child. Impertinence is dangerous. Is it? Isn't this the praying girl? The same, a real beauty. Mm. Just like her father. Mm. I want to know. She said you would know. I'm afraid Mrs. Sibbins is having a joke at your expense. Shouldn't you be at home? Why? Why should I be at home? Your mother needs you, surely. I'm playing. In the graveyard. You live about the graveyard, Minister. Is there something wrong with it? No, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Are you ill? I've been better. You are always ill. Why are you ill? Only God knows. I know why. I'm sure you don't. You're odd. You walk with a cane. Who's active? For age? Like her father. Mr. Sibbins, said it's quite enough. The child is fatherless. Jesus was fatherless. <laughs> Who told you that? Hester told me that. You look unwell, Minister. Are you unwell? It is under concern. I'm concerned about witches. You should tell me if they bleed. You need not fear witches, child. I'm not afraid. But you are. Such big thoughts for such a small child. Go on home now. You have no business being here. Will you die soon? Pearl, come here. Hester. I turned around and you disappeared on me. Don't ever disappear on me. He scared me. Who scared you? The minister. I was playing and he's here. Mistress Prynne, I assure you. Mistress Prynne. Will I see you tonight? Will you ride with me? Ah, oh, such rudeness. I only asked her a question. Indeed. And you, Minister, will you ride with me tonight? You're bleeding, Mr. Simmons. So it's true after all. You speak in riddles. Do I? I'll see you again, Minister. An altogether stimulating woman. Don't you think? Perhaps from a medical standpoint? Not at all. She speaks her mind. Attractive the quality. I've never given her a second thought. Why not? Why should I? Because you're a man. You're a busy man? A young man. A potentially vital man. And she's a widow. Precisely. Besides, she's a governor's sister. A very respectable catch and she's experienced. Uh, I'd like to rest now, if I may. Surely you've at least an interest in rehabilitating Mr. Simmons. She has no desire to be rehabilitated. Clever huh. woman. I'm an old man, Arthur. I've lost my vigor. But if I were still young, I would take the Hibbins. I would you come this Sunday morning to hear my sermon? Will you come with me to the whorehouse Sunday evening? <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, a sense of humor has always eluded you. I'm not joking. Neither am I. Seven years, and I'm still eager for you to take an interest in my work. Yes, rather like a schoolboy. My school is long finished, Roger. We learn something new every day. And what have you learned today? That Mr. Skippin is remarkably boxsome. <laughs> I've noticed. You should have. Cheer up, Arthur. I take an interest in your health. Why must I also take an interest in your preachings? Because it is my health. Is it? I've heard differently. I've heard that lately your sermons are quite inspired, and you remain so ill. Do you believe everything you hear? But I do. People leave the church in tears, Arthur. They are transported. 
knew so well. One would think you vested an inches in remaining him. I feel better now. Stronger. You're shriveling up, Arthur. You ought to rest. There's, there's no place to rest here. A better place to rest, Arthur, than in a graveyard. Sit. Why do your medicines have no effect on me? Perhaps they do have an effect on you. It's quite a sight. A minister sitting in the dirt of a graveyard. It's hallowed ground. How do you know? It's, of course it's hallowed. But how do you know? Just do. I question very little, Arthur. That's the nature of faith, but it's not the nature of living. The nature of life is inexplicable. Science explains life. And the nature of science is inquisitive. You did not confuse me. I'm weak, tired. You told me you'd better, stronger. The truth is, you're sitting in a pile of dirt. I admire you so much, Roger. Mr. Stevens is quite voluptuous. She may have murdered her husband. Voluptuous women often do. <laughs> the demands they make. Brutal. I'm exhausted, Roger. You appeal to me out here in the open air. Sit a while. Talk. I'm not a handsome man. I had a voluptuous wife once. A boxing wife. I lack a certain rugged quality that, that appeals to women. She possessed the most delightful wit. She was inquisitive. Passionate. There's a femininity about me that, that appeals sometimes to children. You're so young. She was a child of salt when she gave to me. I took from her eagerly. Selfishly. She gave to me. Well. Who can say what the source of her generosity was? But I don't care much for children. They sweat, they're untidy. Perhaps it was her Mediterranean nature. Native? Her native nature? I beg your pardon? Your wife? She was a native of the woods beyond Boston. No, she was not. Yes, yes, you've told me a thousand times. No, I did not. Uh, Roger, I wouldn't have thought a man could confuse the facts of his wife's background. She fucked me with astonishing abandonment and despised every minute of it. I confused nothing. Has a bitter odor. Have you never tasted a woman, Arthur? Women, trust me. You might not be so mysteriously ill if you kept company with women. Should I drink this now? Would you want to face my medicines? Why take this one? I have nothing to lose. Spoken like a man of science, Arthur. Like a man who's had a woman. This is new, this tonic. Where does it come from? Drink it and see. Trust is an odious virtue, Arthur. I'd rather be desired by a woman than have their trust. The tonic comes from a weed I found in an unmarked grave. That is sacrilege! Good science. How could you treat me with- On properties? You could have killed me with it. I had faith in the weed and its properties. You said you had nothing to lose. You shut me out! You always have! My theory is this. The weed comes from a secret buried of a heart of a man who rests in the unmarked grave. How do you know it's a man? Men have secrets. The women do not. Women may have secrets, but men keep them. It's a dubious theory, Roger. How would you know? You don't put much faith in scientific theory. We, you're such good friends. Don't, don't do this. Uh, the tonic works already. <clears throat> Feel no difference. I remain seated in dirt. You look me in the eye the first time this day. The sun's been bright today, Roger. I often wonder what you keep in that bag. I keep what I need. And what is that? What, for instance, do you need from me? I'm not inclined to harp up discussions, Arthur. But I am. I'd like to know, please. A man burdened with his secret should especially avoid the intimacy of his physician. I keep no secret from you. Think up, Arthur.
becomes a legend. The myth of her letter grows into spectacle as if she and it burn a streak of conscience through the dense New England psyche. Hester embroiders and gains renown. I collect more trophies. Hester keeps nothing. She donates everything to the poor. I have nightmares. Hester transforms. My nightmares begin and end with the letter A. Why do you stand so long at the edge of wood, Pearl? I'm waiting for the dark man. There is no dark man. Mr. Sibbins said he can take you places. I take you places. You take me to the scaffold. That, that is why I go. Take me again. There are better places to go, Pearl. Where? I don't know exactly. You say there are better places. Tell me where they are. How would I know, child? I've never been anywhere better. Don't you want to go? Not especially. In a better place, people will look at us more. I worry about you, Pearl. People look at us when we were on the scaffold. That doesn't make it a better place. I like to be looked at. Oh, nobody decent likes to be looked at. <laughs> are you decent? I'm weary. If you don't want to be looked at, why do you wear such a pretty letter? Gather flowers. Play. Play with me. I can't. I'm waiting. Who has died? No one's died, child. <laughs> when people die, you make things for them. Dresses, gloves. Whose gloves are those? These are Governor Bellingham's gloves, Pearl. We're waiting for him. Is he my father? No, he's the governor. Who is my father? You're fatherless. Mistress Hibbins said everybody has a father. Mistress Hibbins is wrong. Some people are gifts. You are God's gift to me, Pearl. Come here. Come here and kiss your mother. I'd rather kiss my father. <laughs> that is not possible, Pearl. But don't be sad. Let me hold you. I'm not sad. I'm waiting for my father. It's getting cold. Come here and keep your mother warm. What's a whore? <laughs> Sometimes I shudder at the thought of you, Pearl. Are you a whore? You are my flesh. Kiss me. You're boring. I'm your mother. I don't have to interest you. Why do people look away from you? You rarely call me mother anymore. Why is that? People didn't look away from you when we were on the scaffold. People are strange. Do you love me, Pearl? Oh, you ask a lot of questions. The governor will be here soon. I love you if you play with me. Do what you will, child. You be me, and I be my father. I don't like this game. <laughs> I saw the minister yesterday. I smile at him. He put his head over his heart. You never smile at anybody. Stop this game now, Pearl. Why does the minister keep his head over his head? Do not test me, Pearl. But why? Is he very sick? Uh, he, he has much to think about. Then why doesn't he keep his heart? Head over his head. Oh my God, I don't recognize you sometimes. Hester, look how the verse sticks to you. What? The dark man is here. What was that, child? <laughs> you startled her governor? That is all. Oh, I'm sorry. It is not my practice to startle children. Why not? Children don't like to be startled. I do. I? brought you gloves, Governor, in the hopes that you might come this way. Oh, that is good of you, Mistress Prince. 
Though I would have gladly made the trip to your cottage to fetch them. We don't like guests. <laughs> Hello. You're the ugliest men I have ever seen. <laughs> oh, my feathers. Uh, really, Mistress Prince, your child is most offensive. Never mind, Governor. Let's show that I understand each other. Truth cannot offend. Isn't that right, Pearl? Did you meet the dark man in the woods? Reverend Lindsay, let me help you. Oh, 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 oh dear, oh dear. Oh, dear. I'm fine, really. We've had quite a long walk. Is oh. the minister dying, Mama? <laughs> go off and play, Pearl. I must speak to these men now. But there's nowhere to go. Boston is full of possibilities, child. How many possibilities? Why don't you go and count them? Delightful child. Fourth, right? Governor Bellingham, we must discuss a matter of some urgency. Can't it wait, Mistress Prince? The Reverend is in a state of considerable distress. So am I. Perhaps we should get going on, Arthur. Say, this need not be a private discussion. Your dress, Mistress Prince. There's a burr on your dress. Hmm. Mr. Chillingworth uses burrs sometimes for his tonics. Ah. Excellent specimen, Arthur. Thank you. The Reverend is most concerned with the state of his health. Sometimes he can think of nothing else. What is this matter of urgency, Mr. Prince? I understand. You need to take my child from me. I see. And how have you come to understand this? Whenever I care for whiskey, I find it most refreshing in the afternoon. No? Well, true collective health there. There is much gossip in the marketplace. Women are indiscreet. Which women? Let's not digress. You must not take pull away from me, Governor. This is not the time, Mistress Prince, nor the place. This is the only time and place I have. There are questions. I can answer any question. I think not, Mistress Prince. We feel you are not the appropriate person to instill the child with sufficient Christian foundation. Who is we? That is irrelevant. You said we. Name these men. There is myself and several others. <laughs> Reverend, is this true? You, you must question the governor's authority, Hester. It is my responsibility, Mistress Prince, to make decisions for the good of the community. I am the child's mother, Governor. I couldn't be more appropriate to raise her. Ordinarily, I would agree with you. You've lost your way, Mistress Prince, and we must see to it that the child does not lose her. Children lose their way all the time. That isn't their nature. Do you agree, Reverend? I suppose it happens. We fear for her soul. And do you not fear for mine? Yours was lost long ago, Mistress Friend. Then you would not take my punishment from me, would you? Only our Lord can revoke punishment. The child is my punishment. Well, allow me to question her. She is unused to questioning. I must be allowed to assess the quality of her upbringing. Call the child, Mistress Prince. Do not deny his request, Hester. Call the child. I already have. I heard no call. I did. Pearl, the governor will ask you some questions. You will answer with consideration. Must I? Now, now, child, do not be afraid. Are you evil? No, no, no. Of course I'm not. Why then should I fear you? Do you know what evil is, child? Boston is evil. <laughs> but that is preposterous, child. You live in Boston. I know. <laughs> Do you know who made you, child? I was made. Oh, well then, where do you come from? I was plucked from the bush of wire roses that frame the prison door. <sighs> what from wild bush and frame from prison door? <laughs> This is outrageous, Mistress Friend. I heard enough. That child of yours must be taken from you at once. Never, never be taken, Governor. Not with your Hester, 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 calm yourself. I have much to say, Governor. A man in your condition, Reverend Dinsdale, would best save his energy for a more spiritually fruitful matter. There's nothing more fruitful than a mother's love for her child, Governor. Indeed. I wonder where this might lead. The girl should, should not be separated from her mother. But surely, Reverend, when a mother is unfit... Tell me, Governor, which of Boston's mothers would be fit for this child? I haven't thought of anyone in particular. 
Hester <laughs> understands her nature better than any of us. She nurtures the child. She loves her well. Could, could you love Pearl Governor? Could the woman of Boston love her? I'm sure we could learn to love her. It is our duty as Christians. Maybe your duty, but it is not your right. It is Hester Prynne's right to love Pearl. The, the child is Hester's living caution. I have not considered this previously, Reverend. Consider it now. We cannot know the extent of this woman's suffering. Do not add to it. He's eloquent, no? Once again, Mistress Prynne, our good minister has reminded me of the necessity for compassion. Very well. I may regret this decision. However, the child may remain with you. For now! <laughs> Do not be ungrateful for my kindness, Mr. Spring. I'm grateful for God's kindness, Governor. Governor. Why, Mistress Prynne, they are exquisite. I must pay you well for these. You paid me well today, Governor. Good day. Thank you. It's nothing, really. It's everything. I don't get on well with children, usually. Who uh, does? Especially <laughs> with such an odd child. Such an old child. Fathers do. And mothers. And parents. You've uncanny perceptions, Roger. For a man without a family? You are my family, Arthur. I pray I haven't judged the situation incorrectly. Mistress Brynn is a remarkable seamstress. These gloves, <laughs> such <laughs> elegant. <laughs> Mrs. Prynne is an elegant woman, quite unlike her spawn. She's yet a child, Roger. Hold your judgment. There is something elusive about that child. Perhaps by analyzing the child's nature carefully, one might uncover the secret to a fraternity. Children are not replications of their parents. No, but they're cast in their shadows. Well then, my sister casts a long shadow, gentlemen, and I must get back to her. Is Mr. Stevens unwell? That, Mr. Chillingworth, is a question to which I've given considerable thought. My sister is greatly agitated of late. She sits by the window and waits for what I cannot say. She might benefit from one of Mr. Chillingworth's tonics. My sister needs a noose. Reverend, not talk. Good day, gentlemen. Hmm. A harsh man, full of regret, bitterness, such leadership potential. I've never known you to drink, Roger. I drink when I'm thirsty. Do you? My thirsts are uh, uncomplicated. You look thin, Arthur. I'm hungry. I'm fasting. Fasting will not assist your recovery. It cleanses. There are other ways of cleansing, Arthur. Confession, for instance. Confession aids in spiritual cleansing, Roger. Perhaps your illness has its roots in the spiritual. If that is true, then. Then God will have his way with you. You're simple-minded, Arthur. You're out of your depth in matters of the spirit, Roger. I've lived long, seen much. You know not my heart? I may not know your heart, but I have examined it well. I'm your only patient. Your need is the greatest. Blind yourself to the needs of others. Look around you. I was looked after the needs of another before. Obsession has its uses. You should remarry. Share whiskey with me. Why have you never remarried? Surely a man of your knowledge would have an easy time with a woman. <laughs> I prefer books to women. 
so much to offer. You've given me my life. Yet you do not trust me with your secrets. I swear to you, I keep nothing back. <laughs> I know. But I wouldn't give for a good library. Books had a purpose for me once, but, but now they seem increasingly superfluous. Touch me, Linda. <laughs> I touch you and I'm full of revulsion. My heart, Arthur. Touch my heart. I cannot bear to touch anyone other than myself. Do me this favor and learn. It is cold, Arthur. Someone bears responsibility for this. You must bear your heart in order to heal it. Heed your own advice. Life is meant to be lived with others. Be, be fruitful, multiply. I share my life with you. That isn't the same. What woman would have me? Do not leave me here. Roger, I, I cannot be alone. We all stand alone before God. Do not dare to be Roger. Be fruitful and multiply. Indeed. <clears throat> I am paralyzed. And so the minister, unable to move, hallucinates. I am undone, undone. Oh, what my heart yearns to be free of my tongue. Fights to keep what evil do I perpetrate? What sin do I conceal? I must cleanse. I must cleanse myself alone. I stand alone. My past is past. Is my own is Hester. Is this his confession? I am rooted, O oh Roger, I am forsaken. I am unclean, uncleansed. I sin, I am my sin. My love, I am undone. <laughs> well done, Reverend Dinsdale. Woohoo! No fine in words have passed his sister. <laughs> He's an angel, an angel on earth. I, I wrong you all! I am not what I appear to be! Oh, such extraordinary honesty. What words are these? Reverend, you slave. What thoughts? An example to us all, a real gentleman. <laughs> I am a liar, a oh, hypocrite. That sweetheart you made me hot! Oh, oh, I feel a swoon coming on. <laughs> Hester. I have wanted nothing else. I am not worthy. 
We want to main die tonight, Minister. The worth of my passion cannot be measured. No, no, come no closer. You are an apparition. We sat by his bed. Hester wiped sweat from his forehead, and then he died. I thought there would be more to it. I closed his eyes when nobody was watching. Touch me. See if I'm real. I, I walked this night to release my burden of guilt. And everyone's asleep. Take my hand. The dead man was warm. I held his hand for a long time after he died, and he didn't go cold. I thought he might freeze, but he just kept lying there. I've missed you. You mustn't. Miss me, Arthur. Please. Stand with me tonight. On the scaffold. All this would not go for naught if you would just miss me. I stand with me, Hester. And the child as well. We we will stand together this night. Pearl, Pearl, ascend with us. Will we fly? No, child. We will climb. She hates me. You're a stranger to her. I cannot see you, Hester. My sight is gone. Don't, don't leave me here. I've always loved your smell, Arthur. Sir, I'm not your master. No, I mean no disrespect. I found the glove this morning. Wear it well, Master Brackett. Oh, it isn't mine. It isn't a sin to find a glove and keep it, man. Anybody could have dropped it. But it's your glove, sir. For God's sake, Brackett, I am your minister, not your captain. Call me by my name. Okay. I found it on the scaffold this morning. I'm ashamed to say I don't know your name, Reverend. Arthur. My name is Arthur. One of the things we don't learn over time. Yes. Well, my name is Julius, but you wouldn't know it. Even my wife calls me Bracket. I don't mind. Yes. Last night she called me Julius. She woke me in the voice to see the portraits. But I was so surprised to hear my first name being called, I forgot to look at it. Could have called you by a name, Reverend. Wouldn't be right. Did you see the portrait, Reverend? No. Well, it lit up the town, it did. The letter A streaking across the sky. How did you know it was there? Well, my wife told me. And this morning in the marketplace, it was all anybody could talk about. But you didn't see it? No. <clears throat> You're a reasonable man, Bracket, right? Use your common sense. You saw no importance. Therefore, there wasn't importance. Forever. The whole town says that they saw the letter There's A. There's no proof of importance. There isn't a trace of it. If you cannot, if you can't put your finger on something, it doesn't exist. General Winthrop passed on last night. What do you mean, passed on, Brian? He died. He's dead. <clears throat> I expect that's true. Passed on? What does that mean? 
Can you touch something that's passed on? Um, I mean no disrespect, sir. <laughs> Will you please stop groveling? Go on, leave, I have work. Is there something else? Perhaps another mind's numbing question of conscience? It's your glove, sir. I thought it must be the devil's work, finding your glove on the scaffold. But since I didn't see the devil put it there himself, I guess he didn't do it. <laughs> How it's been well? It was chill in the air last night. Not at all like summer. They say the A in the sky stood for an angel and that our Lord was warring the way to heaven for General Winthrop's journey. I'll go back to the gardener, Reverend. You know not why I search here, <clears throat> nor what I search for. Well, it's not for me to question you, Reverend. Question me, Bracken, please. Reverend, really, I... Please, you know nothing about me. Well, you don't know anything about me either. Oh, I know, I know you're Julius Brackett, married some 30 years to Charlotte. I know that your four sons love you well. I know that sometimes, sometimes you imagine yourself back in Bristol where you would smoke pipes and drink all day. Well, what do you know about me? I know your name. It's not about <laughs> me. Question me! What, what, anything? <clears throat> Come on. Well, 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 what are you doing out here? Pulling weeds? Ask another question. <laughs> Was that a good question to ask? Excellent question. <laughs> well, Reverend, why are you pulling weeds? To get to the roots? Go on, ask me more. <clears throat> Reverend, really, I can't. I'll go fetch you a doctor, all right? I am done with doctors. No more doctors. They, they, they cannot cure my illness. They, they can't find its roots. I'm covered in dirt. Well, nothing a hot bath won't cure. I'm a mess, Brackets. Look at this mess. Well, nobody here to care for the mess, sir. How about we save my glove? I'll take you home, Reverend. I... I am unclean. Well, you don't notice it. Watch. <laughs> You're a good man, Rocket. And so are you, sir. Come on. The journey's, the journey's not far. <clears throat> Just up the hill, isn't it? Just up the hill. <clears throat> it's, it's no use. Leave me. The journey's not far. It's. Don't, don't leave me, Bracken. Baptize my son, sir. Julius, don't don't go. I won't leave you, Arthur. Come on. This way, sir. Is it true, Mr. Sprint, that Governor Bellingham means to remove the punishment of your scarlet letter? I have heard no such thing. But I think it is true. You've done such good work for the poor and the infirm, Esther. Our community need reward you for your service. Don't patronize me. The governor had its doubts. But you had a formidable ally in the Reverend Dinsdale. Were I worthy, the letter would drop from me of its own accord. Your religious fervor worries me, Esther. What have you done to him? 
God will be the work of malicious children. Such race. His eyes. I love the way they took in the hold of me. But then, children are born to be malicious. I won't witness his destruction. Ah, but you have a child, a girl whose very nature defies analysis. Why is that? We must talk. My time is short, Esther, and there is much to do before I rest. You're fortunate to rest at all, given the great weight on your conscience. I see Beasley, Esther. If you disturb my work, there will be complications. I have done more for him than any man. Then perhaps you can do no more. Do you know what this is? Do not ignore me, husband. It's kept him alive, Esther. He little values his life. His spirit is weak. The mind is strong enough for the both of us. You've lost your spirit. Do not take what is left of his. It's been a long while since you called me husband. Closer. I can pay you. Any price. I will pay it. You cannot stop what is already in motion. It is the Carter rule of science. You can alter the nature of the motion. What would you have me alter, Esther? Forgive him. Would you call to me? Forgive him. Will now kiss my feet? There is yet time in which to redeem yourself, Roger. Forgiveness is much worth you, Esther. Things we do for love. Lick my boots. I betrayed you, but I was never cruel. You married me. I didn't lie to you. Lick my boots. Go on. texture of his hair, his taste, his gentle touch, these things I hold dear. The sound of his voice, his eyes, his... This <gasps> is his touch, Esther. Touch him! This is his taste. Taste him! You are my wife, Esther. I see you as no one has. And I will not. I will not let him go! visible through every window. I block curtains, spend time in libraries, 
meant you in the stacks. My interest was music. I learned to sew, learned to write home, tried to make love with my eyes open. You said the possibilities were infinite. Later, you sent me here. When I got off the boat and wretched. The day we met, I told you a joke. You laughed. You took my hand, and I recognized something which I could no longer recall. It was gratitude, not love, never love. Esther. I can no longer close my eyes, Roger. Take it off, girl. You're filthy, Hester. Have you been playing in the graveyard? Remove it. Now. Why won't you call me mother? Why does he help me not to cry, Hester? Because he has nothing better to do. Why do you disrespect me so? I met a wolf in the woods. It bowed its head so I could pet it. Oh, why wear the scarlet letter pearl? The doctor is very smart. Ask him. I wear it because I like its gold threaded pearl. Mistress Hibbins said it's the dark man's mark on you. I met the dark man long ago, Pearl. The letter is his mark. I was allowed to meet him once, but not again. If you met the dark man, so will I. I fear you've met him already. I want to be just like you. You know not what you say. Mine is prettier. Child, have you no sadness? You missed the spot. I should have turned with birth.
Should have worn an overcoat. Yes, it's deceptively chilly. Trees seem to be very tall. When they're old. I wonder, do they ever stop growing? They grow until they're cut down. <clears throat> Are you cold? Would you like my jacket? No. I'm comfortable with unpredictable weather. Yes. I, I, I picked some flowers. I'm sorry I'm late. I meant to pick them for you. I don't like flowers. Uh, you look well, Hester. You don't? Fine, I'm better lately. I'm miserable. Surely it's the damp air. We can go indoors. I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at this, Hester. What? What aren't you very good at? I don't know, last night was- Last night is gone, Arthur. Why won't you look at me? So quiet here, so so dark. I've grown old. You haven't noticed. Funny that a minister should fear the dark. When I watch Pearl sleep, I sometimes think about what we could have become. Each day I stand at the pulpit and pray that my voice will find you somewhere at peace. That you brush the child's hair and recall something of me. But then she wakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at courtship, Hester. You never were. I know nothing about women. That's part of a charm. I blush easily. I'm afraid of the dark. I bring you gifts you despise. You are no use at all. <laughs> but were you to look upon me now, I could invent a thousand uses for you. I don't know what to say. Say, hello. Hello, Hester. Say, I have brought you some flowers. Uh, I brought you some flowers? Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> I love flowers. <laughs> <laughs> say, take my hand, Hester. Take, take my hand, Hester. What do I say now? <laughs> <laughs> say, I no longer fear the dark. I no longer fear the dark. Because I have found a place that transcends darkness. Because I found a place that transcends darkness. And that place is with you, Hester. And I cannot find that place. <laughs> you are there, Arthur. No goodness comes from sin. I said not a thing about sin. I look at you and I see it all around us. Then close your eyes. We never talked like this, then. We had much to do. Your hands are rough. They're greatly experienced. My hands shame me, unblemished as a child's. Depends on the child. I've wronged you, Esther. You saved us once. Save us again. How can I save you when I cannot save myself? Open your eyes. Describe what you see. A vision which I dare not touch. Your charm, Arthur. Use your charm. I, I touch you and my voice is lost. Then there is nothing more to say. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> You've drawn blood. It's stripped onto your bosom. Good. <laughs> no one will notice it. <laughs> the thing I touch turns red. Then kiss it away. Arthur, whatever else has been between us, I am your friend. Do not mistrust me. I'm friendless. 
Don't be maudlin. It's tiresome. I'm the source who does better than me, but <clears throat> they're unavailable to me. I said, think your naivete once broke my heart. Should have brought you chocolates. The doctor is your enemy. Should have trusted my instincts and stayed indoors. His tonics poison you. you Women like chocolates? Chilling with is my husband. You might have eaten them in silence. I know, Hester. I've always known him. You would have liked him once. I like him now. He isn't even a doctor. He wears his deception well. Oh, I can't wear mine at all anymore. You were always a bad liar, Hester. Leave him, Arthur. I finished what I started. It's, it's my sole attribute. You'll die if you stay. I'll die anyway? We can't sit here and hold hands forever. Why not? It inevitably leads to something else. I should have been a cobbler. You're not good with your hands. I can learn. <clears throat> And this shall be your first lesson. Help me, Arthur. Oh, how shall I help you? We will discard it letter. It will not be undone. It's fastened with pins, Arthur. Look. See how simple it is to use your hands well? I thought it would be weightier or formidable somehow. This, Arthur, is a weight. Substance. I know not what next to do. Rid us of the letter. Oh, there's no way to erase it. Your hands, Arthur. Use your hands. <laughs> Lesson two. Remove my cap. That's too much to ask. I thought you always finished, but you started. <laughs> This, this cannot be sin. Whatever it is, it's waited seven years for your touch. Touch me, Arthur. Someone might see us. Oh, someone's seen us already. Take me. Where? Poor Arthur. <laughs> Pick a place. Each <laughs> bigger. Rome? Too far. Paris? Not far enough. It's England? England. There's always England, Esther. Oh, I'm destined to be surrounded by water. <laughs> When shall we go? Tomorrow. The Spanish main sails to Bristol at midnight. I've made arrangements. But how could you know? I told you. It's my destiny. Is this, is this new beginning possible, Esther? Is, is it true? Kiss me and see. <sighs> Together we are free, Esther. You and I. And Pearl! Of course, we're all giving her time. <laughs> <laughs> She's not an ordinary child. All the worse. Nobody is different than children, Arthur. I'm at such a loss to, to explain her. We we can't undo Pearl. Yes, the one thing I managed to finish well. Arthur, she is a I doubt it. Hester? Child, come sit with us. Hester? Child, it is I. Come. Esther, I, I cannot breathe. There, there, there is no, there's no air. Hester, 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 the what, the what, the letter, the letter, Hester, Hester, the what, the letter. What do you fear, girl? The letter, the letter, Talk to me. The letter, the letter. It's, it's, it's the letter. The letter. She, she does not recognize you.
Well, you love the minister as well. Will his hand always be at his heart? No, child. It is there no longer. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> well, sit with the minister, Pearl. Why should I? Because I'll ask nothing else of you. Pearl? Pearl that, that's a pretty name. How would you know? You're a minister. That doesn't mean I, I can't appreciate beauty. Sure it does. See, do you, do you like school? I don't go to school. Every child goes to school, Pearl. No school will have me. If you don't go to school, what do you do? I make letters. See? This is funny. I didn't say it was. <laughs> You're a very angry little girl. I'm not a girl. I'm a demon. Pearl, behave <laughs> yourself. It's all right, Hester. She's, she's confused. She lacks paternal guidance. Mm. <laughs> My father lives in the woods. Do you live in the woods? I live above the church, Pearl. All ministers live above churches. Do all ministers live above graveyard? No, not all. Some. None. But you. Would you Would you like to go to school, Pearl? Would you like to go to school far from Boston? Mistress Hippen is my teacher. She's not a proper teacher. You're not a proper minister. You're sick. <laughs> Will you walk with Hester and me tomorrow, Minister? Yes, child, I will. Will you walk with us through the marketplace? I, I cannot. <laughs> Mr. Simmons, you look different. So do you. I'm eating. Good for you, Reverend. I'm starving. Well, that's not good, is it? You got any food, Mr. Simmons? I seem to be plumb out of food at the moment. Fruit? I'd like some fruit. <laughs> well, you should have picked berries in the woods yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm ever so sorry I couldn't be with you. I had another engagement with my brother. He's such a ham. I'm sure I don't want to hear this, Mr. Simmons. But tonight, Reverend, we will all write again, together. You really want to discuss this? I understand. We can speak more freely later when we're alone in the woods. Smut! Oh, I beg your pardon? Bitch! Whore! <laughs> you should leave the as minister. They clearly have a bad advice. Tramp slatter! Witch! Scum! I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> I do. But for my 
Why do they say those things? Why am I so goddamn hungry? Hold tight, Arthur. Soon it will be midnight, and your hunger will be soothed. Steady. Steady now. Did I hear you speak of our Lord, the Reverend? Come to Ballingham. Have you got any fruit? Fruit? Nuts. I'll take nuts. Uh, you ought to take breakfast indoors. It's some kind of a holiday? <laughs> You're joking, right? Ah, I see. A lack of nourishment has caused you to forget election day. You are a thief and a liar. I hope you lose. I didn't quite catch that, Reverend. I haven't prepared a sermon. I'm afraid the casting of a ballot will go on with or without your sermon. Good thing, Reverend. Throat is burning. I'm thirsty. Food, I need food. Please, somebody. It's not long now, Arthur. Keep calm. Boston to Halifax to St. John's, across to Dungarvan. Dungarvan to Swansea, to <coughs> Cardiff to Bristol. Steady now. Rackets? Thank Christ! Have you got any more? I've had a very difficult time finding one at this hour of the morning. I've taken a drink lately. I'm famished, Brackett. Well, there's no accounting for our appetite, sir. Say horrible things, think terrible thoughts. Perhaps you need a vacation, sir. Yes, yes, a vacation. Is it midnight yet? I swore I'd never journey across this vast ocean again. Funny how our oaths come to naught. Boston to Halifax to St. John's. Beyond. Hold tight. You look pale, Arthur. He's very hungry, sir. Let me check your fever. Don't touch me! I suggested a vacation, Mr. Chillingworth. Excellent idea, Brackett. In fact, I'm sailing for Bristol this evening on the Spanish main. Perhaps the minister will join me. No, it, it cannot be. It cannot be! I booked my passage early, Arthur. You wouldn't believe the number of people wanting to catch a midnight boat. Here. Let me check your pulse. I no longer need your medicines, Mr. Chillingworth. I ran out of medicines. See? No bad. It must not be. Ray's beginning, Mr. Chillingworth. That's to take a good position. Wise man, Bracket. <coughs> what parade? What parade? Is it finally all for nothing? It's the election day parade, Minister. But, but I have a sermon. That's too bad. What? I must, I must preach. Too late. <laughs> Why are they silent? They are not silent. You can't hear them. If we cannot be free of him elsewhere, we shall be free of him here. Pastor, is it, is it midnight yet? No, Arthur. It, it's noon. When, when do we leave? Midnight. Did you bring enough food? The trip is long and treacherous. There's food enough for all of us. Miss the boat, Hester. No. Let me take you there. I don't want to miss the boat. You won't. Is it, is it midnight, Esther? Yes, Arthur. It's midnight. Did we miss the boat? No. We're on it now. Esther, I, I have much to say. Come speak. People of Boston, hear this most unworthy minister. Hear this most Boston, this is my election day sermon. Arthur, do not ruin your reputation. Is he drunk? He is quite sober, sir. Unworthy of your affections. I am undone. I'm done. Hester, it's midnight. I'm too late. No, not yet, Arthur. There's time. Girl, daughter, take my hand in the daylight. No, no, you will not do this to me. What's he talking about? Who's daughter? I think he's referring to himself. No, stop it! What shall I say, girl? Whatever you like. Governor, I I am weary and I I can no longer hide my sin. And so I take my place on the scaffold with Hester Prynne and, and young Pearl. May, 
May God forgive me for not having done so seven years ago. What is he talking about? What sin? And, and why does that bell continue to chime? <laughs> Escape. The bell cannot be stopped, sir. Is it midnight yet, daughter? I don't know. Hush, Arthur. Rest now. Rest. It's very hot. Fire. Is the portal fire, daughter? There's no fire. My chest. My chest is on fire. Look. Look. Wow. <gasps> He was valiant to the end, defending the right of the print woman to keep her child no matter what. I believe the child was about to fall off the scaffold when he climbed up to save her. Must have been too much for his heart. Boston will miss him. He can never be replaced. He gave his election day sermon and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. I can't tell you what happened up there on the scaffold. I mean, with a storm and the bell that wouldn't stop chiming, you'll bear this himself. <laughs> he took his shirt off through it. I think he might have been bleeding and meant to use the shirt as a tourniquet. <laughs> he was very hungry that morning. That much I know. The minister's funeral is a simple affair. Governor Bellingham manages to speak badly at great length. At the graveyard, only Master Bracken witnesses the minister's remains laid to rest. The governor lives long enough to see his sister hang as a witch. And Master Bracken, having nothing better to do, drinks himself to death. Chillingworth remains indoors, and mostly Boston forgets he's there. Within the year, he dies. His body is discovered at the prison door his hand reaching out for what we do not know. Before he dies, he manages to write a will. And so, I am an heiress. I develop a fondness for water and sail away from Boston forever. I keep watch for solid ground, but can't seem to find it. And what of Hester? For a time she leaves Boston and no one strays too close to her cottage. That cottage with so many windows overlooking the sea, but one day, when Boston least expects it, Hester returns to her cottage and reclaims the scarlet letter. Boston, many seek out her advice and she's patient and kind to them all. When finally, she dies. Boston cannot recall why it was she wore the scarlet letter in the first place. She is buried in what by now is the old graveyard where there is yet a single space in which to be laid next to a man called Dimsdale, who nobody remembers and for whom nobody cares to mourn.
Esther? Are we there yet? 